My name is William Justice. When I'm not making YouTube videos, one of the many things I do is develop video games. The other day I was working on a promo for one of my latest games and I wanted to share a few of the techniques and things I'm planning on using in the promo video. All right, here's some of the game graphics. Today we're gonna to talk about setting up animations in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. How to quickly set up the animations, how to set objects to animate along a path, how to easily adjust animation timing and set animations to bounce back and repeat. And I'm going to show you how to create a looping animation using only one node and no keyframes using Fusion. You're going to think that there's no way you can do this, but I want to challenge you to give it some thought, kind of understand how it's working, and see if this is something that maybe you could try in one of your videos. It's not that hard, and once you understand how it works, it's pretty simple. There's so many layers to DaVinci Resolve. I love exploring and learning as I go. If you like my videos, please subscribe and leave comments. I would love to hear from you. Let's make some animations. Okay, we're going to start by creating a fusion clip. In the media pool, we're going to right click, click new fusion composition, and we're going to make this one kind of long. Let's make it, uh, make it 30 seconds. We'll hit create. We'll take the fusion composition, drag it into the timeline, and click fusion at the bottom to get into fusion. All right, we have our media out and nothing is attached. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the media pool. And I've loaded in a lot of my game assets right here. These are my uh, some some of the some of the ass assets from graphics from the game. And let's take uh, take this guy here and drag him in. Okay, so we have we'll hit uh, two on the keyboard so we can see what that looks like. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add a background. So we're going to click the background icon from the uh, the bar here and attach that background to the media out. We will hit two, click media out and hit two so we can see what it looks like. And to get the graphic in, we're gonna take the output of the graphic and drag it into the output of background one. And that's gonna put the, create a submerge node and put the graphic on top of the background. To do the animation, all we have to do is use the merge node. So we're gonna click on the merge and we can move this graphic around to where we want it to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it to the lower left-hand corner, make sure we're on the first keyframe and we'll go over to the inspector. We'll go ahead and make that big. And we're gonna click the keyframe option for the position. Then we're gonna go to, let's say, uh, frame 60, right in there. And we're gonna take the graphic and we're gonna move it to the top right. So you can see the graphic is moving right along that line right there. We can make our animations more interesting by adjusting the animation path using curves. Okay, so let's add some curves here. Um, you can see we have a straight line here from the start point at the lower left to the end point at the upper right. So to add the curves, we can be anywhere in this area, we click on a point. So here I clicked on the start point and you see it put these little handles in and you can take these handles and move them around and that lets you it lets us adjust the curve. So we'll bring that over this way. We'll click the point, click the point at the top right and we can move that around. And you can see that now we have our graphic moving along that curved area. One of the other things you can do is you can actually add more points along this curve to create a more interesting um, path. So we'll click here and we can drag this one way up here and we'll click down here and we'll move this one this way. You've created kind of like an S here. And each one of these points we can adjust it. So we can actually take this and flip it around and we can have our character do a loop. Just like that. So we'll go to the beginning and let's watch it loop. Once the animation is set up, you may want to adjust the animation timing. You can use this using the spline editor. This lets you set up curves and set up where the keyframes come in and come out. You can also easily set the animation to bounce, repeat, and um, actually invert it and do a lot of other things with it. One of the things I always struggle with when doing my animations is timing. You want to get things to move and um, go at the right speed and end at the right time at the specific endpoints. We can use the spline editor to adjust the timing. So let's uh, bring the inspector up and we'll click spline. To see the curves in here, we're going to click on the merge one node. If you have more merges, there'll be or more merges or more nodes or more keyframes, you'll all see them in there. We're going to click on this icon right here to see the full um, the path where the key keyframes are. Now, if we wanted to make the animation shorter, what we can do is highlight both of these keyframes 
and there's this icon down here called time stretch. So when we click time stretch, we get these two bars at both of the keyframes. So we want the animation to happen faster. We'll just, we'll bring it in like this. And you can see right over here, this is where the ending keyframe is and it's actually moving that. See, watch that move there. So in this way, when we bring it in, the animation is gonna happen a lot faster. Like that. And we can even make it go a lot faster. But let's uh, bring the time out a bit. Okay. One of the things you want to do is it's always good to use curves here. So we can highlight both of those points and either hit S or hit this curves um, icon down here to do the smooth. And that will allow us to adjust the easing in and out. Um, so it's going to kind of start out slow, pick up a little faster and then end slow. All right, a couple of the other interesting things we can do, we'll uh, recenter everything, is we can highlight both of these points and there's a couple more things down here. Um, we have this one and this will actually reverse it so that the animation will go the other way. So it's gonna start at the end and go to the beginning. That's something you can do. We're gonna flip that back. We'll hit the reverse again, like that. We're gonna get it to repeat. So we highlight both of them. And this icon right here is actually gonna set a loop. And that's gonna have it start down here and go to the end. And then it's just gonna keep on doing that throughout the length of the animation. So to go to the end, jump back to the front and it'll keep on going. The other thing you can do is if we, instead of doing the loop, you can get it to bounce back. So we'll highlight those two, those two and we'll hit this icon do here to do what they call a ping pong. And you'll see that it's just gonna to go to the end, it'll stop and come right back around. And the interesting thing about this is that we can go to these two frames and we can still highlight both and change our timing. And you notice all the curves kind of move in and it'll repeat at the new, along the new timing. Okay, now it's time for the one node, no keyframe animation. To do this, we're gonna use a merge node, connect up the object we wanna merge, go into the inspector and enable expressions. And we're gonna use a sign function to set up the animation. It may seem complex, but in reality, it's super simple. Okay, don't worry if you fail trigonometry, you only need to know one thing. The sign function alternates values between negative one and one. And we're gonna use this to get the animation to repeat and bounce back. I'm gonna show you how. Okay, we're going to start with a basic fusion composition here. We have a uh, background node, which is currently set to black. The media in has this graphic in it. We have a transform node and it's merged into the media out. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay, to set up the animation, we're going to use expressions. Now don't let yourself get intimidated. When you hear expressions, just think an input box that lets you set the value. So we're going to make sure the transform node is selected. And the first thing we're going to start with is we're going to um, change the angle. So the angle can be changed with this little control here. We can move it back and forth. Or we can right click on it, choose expression, and that adds the input box under here, which lets us set the value. So we can set it to say 30 degrees. And that uh, rotated the graphic 30 degrees. So we can also use the input box to enter some, uh, some settings here that will change the animation based on the frames or time of the animation. To do this, we're just gonna enter time. And what this is gonna do is this gonna, is gonna set the angle to be equal to the time of the animation or the number of frames. So you can see as we move the animation through here, the angle changes. So if we set, the, uh, set to frame 79, the angle will be 79. So this this sets the animation to match the frame. So we'll play it here. So let's say we want the animation to go a little faster. We can modify the expression box and add a little bit of math in here. So we're gonna put time times two. And what this means is whatever the current time or frame is, the angle will be twice the amount of that. So if we go to frame 20 right there, you'll see that the angle is 40. So what this does is it makes the angle change faster than the time. So the animation will move faster. And we can even bump that up, say, if, if uh, time times five. 
and it's going to go a lot faster. The same thing works if we wanted to slow the animation down. Okay, so we can divide it by two. What this means is when we're on frame 20, the angle is only going to be 10, and that effectively slows the animation down. I'm not going to get into the detail in the math, but we can use the trigonometry sine function to create a repeat, repeating animation. The sine function is used for computing angles, and it will return a value from negative one to one with decimal values in between. So this is going to allow the uh, animation to change over time and to repeat. So let's set up this um, angle field with the sine function. So we're going to type sin for sine, and inside parentheses we're going to put the time. So as the frame changes, we're going to get different values in here for the sine. So it's going to go from negative one to one. So we're going to start it out, and you see when we're playing here, you see this value changing. It's changing super fast, and you can see the animation is rocking back and forth. Now it's not changing much because sine returns negative one to one, so the angle is going to be going from negative one to one. But if we multiply the sine times, let's say, 30, that's going to change the angle from negative 30 to 30 because it's being multiplied by the negative one. So let's see what that looks like. And it's rocking back and forth a little bit more. Now to slow this down, just like we did before, we can take the time and divide it. So let's say divided by 10, which means that going into the sine function, the time is going to be changing slower. And we can see we have the animation rocking back and forth. Angle changing, you can see it's going from negative 30 to 30. So we're going to use the same thing to change the position and the aspect to create the bouncing animation. So let's right click on the aspect and let's just show you what that does. It, it kind of will squish it down and stretch it out like that. So we're going to right click on that and say expression. And just like before we could type in a value of 0.5 and you see that brings it down. But we're going to use the sine function, and we're going to type in 1 plus. Now, the reason we're typing in 1 is because 1 is the center value. So when we do the sine function, it's going to go minus 1, which would subtract off of that and make it 0, to 1, which is going to go to 2. So it's going to bounce back and forth between 0 and 2. So we'll type in sine time, and let's divide this one by 5 to slow it down just a bit and we'll see what happens. Okay, so that one's going all the way down to zero so you can't see it. So if you want it to not, not be as much, you can take the sine function and divide that by two. Um, and what that's doing is it's taking the negative one to one and it's di dividing that in half, so it's gonna be negative 0.5 to plus 0.5. And when the animation's running, because we're adding one to it, it's gonna go from 0.5 to 1.5. Then you can see that's happening right there. All right, the last thing we're going to do is to kind of get it to bounce up and down. So we're going to change, do the same kind of a thing in the center position. Hit uh, right click on center, choose expression. And this one, there's a, a point in here. So the point is 0.5, which is the X, and 0.5 on the second parameter over here, which is the Y. So we're going to just take the second 0.5 over here and create our sine function. We're going to put the time in it and we'll divide that by 15. I've just kind of you kind of have to play around with these numbers to kind of see what speed works for you. And we'll click off of that and we'll play it. And we got our bouncing animation. And you know, just like before, if you want it to bounce faster, you just reduce the um, how much you're dividing the time by, and it'll bounce a lot, bounce up and down a lot faster. And there we are. That's our uh, one node, which is this transform node. Uh, there's no keyframes in here. We just use a few expressions. Um, and this is something you just need to try out and play around with. And once you do it, it's, it's pretty simple. And you just kind of play around with the numbers and see what works for you. I've been playing around a lot with Fusion, but I'm going to be looking at many new and different things really soon. Please subscribe to follow my progress, comments, questions, I'd love to hear from you. Leave them below. Thanks for watching.